Hola y bienvenidos a la clase del español. Este video es parte de la NLLS Programa para Estudiantes de Idiomas. Este video instructivo es para el Español 1, Cuento A, Parte 1. Hello and welcome to your Spanish class. This video is part of the NLLS Program for Language Learners. This instructional video is for Spanish 1, Story A, Part 1. For this video, you will need your classroom journal or notebook and something to write with. Feel free to stop, rewind, and fast forward as needed throughout this video. Empecemos. Today's story is titled Juanito. This is part one of the story. Before we get into the story, let's take a look at our I can statements and our additional vocabulary that we are going to be using. On the screen, you can see the goals for this story section. These I can statements are the things you should be able to communicate by the end of this section. As you can see, they're broken up into three sections, novice low, novice mid, and novice high. These are called levels of proficiency. Proficiency is basically how well someone can speak a language. Novice low represents the most basic expressions in a conversation. These are expressions that are used on a daily basis. Novice mid is one step above and adds a little more information to a conversation. Novice high is your goal for level one. While still very easy, it allows you to communicate even more information and demonstrates a good level of proficiency. Pause this video and write your I can statements in your journal or notebook. Now let's take a look at some vocabulary that we're going to be integrating into our story. On the screen, you see some additional vocabulary words and expressions that we're going to be using and incorporating into the story. Don't worry about what they mean yet. We'll be coming back to them shortly. Pause the video and take a few minutes to copy them into your journal or notebook. And finally, here's your story for A1. Pause the video again and take a few minutes to copy the story into your journal or notebook. Now that you have your story written down in your notes, I'm going to read the story to you slowly. Focus on each word as I say them out loud. Pay attention to the way each word sounds. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Me llamo Juanito. Soy de Puerto Rico. Soy alto. Soy guapo. Y soy muy inteligente. No soy muy artístico, pero soy muy atlético. Now I'll read that again a little faster. After, I'll read it at a normal conversational speed. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Me llamo Juanito. Soy de Puerto Rico. Soy alto. Soy guapo. Y soy muy inteligente. No soy muy artístico, pero soy muy atlético. Now for conversational speed. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Me llamo Juanito. Soy de Puerto Rico. Soy alto, soy guapo y soy muy inteligente. No soy muy artístico, pero soy muy atlético. I'm going to read it one more time, and this time I want you to read along with me. As I say each sentence, repeat it out loud, making sure that you're pronouncing the words as correctly as you can. Ready? Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Me llamo Juanito. Soy de Puerto Rico. Soy alto. Soy guapo. Y soy muy inteligente. No soy muy artístico. Pero, soy muy atlético. Muy bien, muy, muy, muy bien. Rewind the video and do it again until you're comfortable with the words and how they sound. You can record yourself and play it back if you want to. Just focus on your pronunciation. Now that you have the pronunciation down, let's start the lesson. You'll need to follow along with me, repeat when you need to, follow all of the instructions and cues, and just have fun with it. Remember, you can always stop, 
pause, and rewind as much as you need to to make sure that you're understanding. ¿Listos? ¡Vamos! Let's start with the word hola. You've probably already figured it out, but hola means hello. It's the most basic way to say hello to someone, to greet someone. Let's take a look at a couple of other ways that we can do this. At the top of your vocabulary list, you have saludos. Saludos just means greetings. So here's a couple of more greetings that we can use. ¿Qué tal? Repeat that. ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? Just means what's up. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué pasa? Also means what's up. So you could use those in combination with hola and say hola. ¿Qué tal? Hola. ¿Qué pasa? Back on the story, you see the expression ¿Cómo estás? That means how are you? How you doing? So put those together, you've got Hola, ¿cómo estás? Hola, ¿cómo estás? If you're talking to friends or someone younger than you, you could replace ¿cómo estás? with ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué pasa? Hola, ¿qué tal? Hola, ¿qué pasa? Hola, ¿cómo estás? All of those are saludos or greetings. Well, if someone says hello to you or asks how you're doing, you want to say something back to them, right? So let's go back to our vocabulary and look at ways that we can answer ¿Cómo estás? Right under saludos, you see ¿Cómo estás? You already know what that means, but look below that. You have bien. ¿Y tú? Muy bien. Gracias. And then mal. So if someone asks you, ¿Cómo estás? The most appropriate way to respond is, ¿Bien? ¿Y tú? To be even more polite, you would put a gracias on there. Muy bien, gracias. ¿Y tú? The ¿Y tú? is just asking, and you? And of course, mal means bad. So, ¿Cómo estás? Mal. You can also put a muy there and say, muy mal. Very bad. So a simple conversation would be, Hola, ¿cómo estás? Bien, ¿y tú? Muy bien, gracias. Let's take a look at what Juanito says next. Me llamo Juanito. Me llamo is just how you tell someone your name. If I were introducing myself to someone, I would say, Me llamo Craig Rackley. Me llamo Craig Rackley. So how would you introduce yourself to someone? That's right. You just use me llamo and put your name at the end. It's that easy. Practice. Muy bien. Bien hecho. Excelente. So, back on vocabulary, you see the section Introducciones. You see a couple of questions there. ¿Cómo te llamas? And ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cómo te llamas? Is what's your name? ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Craig Rackley. ¿Y tú? ¿Cómo te llamas? The next question is ¿Cómo se llama? Now you would use this one if you're introducing someone else. For example, I would say ¿Cómo se llama tu mamá? ¿Cómo se llama tu mamá? And that, of course, is What's your mom's name? ¿Cómo se llama tu papá? ¿Cómo se llama tu papá? And that, of course, is, what is your dad's name? ¿Cómo se llama tu amigo? ¿Cómo se llama tu amigo? What is your friend's name? That friend would be male, because amigo would be a male friend. If I wanted to ask about a female friend, I would change it a little bit. ¿Cómo se llama tu amiga? ¿Cómo se llama tu amiga? We'll get into the differences a little bit later. If you would like to answer those questions, look below. Me llamo blank, se llama blank, and te llamas blank. You already know me llamo is my name is, so me llamo blank. If you want to answer, ¿Cómo se llama tu mamá? You would say, mi mamá se llama blank. In my case, mi mamá se llama Susana. Mi mamá se llama Susana. 
¿Cómo se llama tu padre? ¿Cómo se llama tu padre? Mi padre se llama Carlos. Mi padre se llama Carlos. The next one is te llamas blank. That would be telling someone their name. Let's say your best friend, Reynaldo, loses all of his memory and you have to tell him, Hey, te llamas Reynaldo. Te llamas Reynaldo. If you notice, each one of those expressions are slightly different. For example, if I'm talking about myself, I'm going to use me, and then llamo is going to end with the letter o. I'm talking about myself there. Me llamo Craig. Se llama, talking about someone else. There's a se in front of there, but the word ends with an a, llama. Se llama, or mi madre, se llama Susana. Mi padre se llama Carlos. And then te llamas, there's a te in front, but the word ends with a-s. Te llamas. Also in the question, como te llamas. That's very, very, very important. You can't mix those up. For example, you can't say me llamas, and you can't say te llamo. Those make no sense. So make sure that you learn me llamo has an O, se llama has an A, and te llamas has an A-S. That's very important in Spanish, and you're going to understand why as you continue studying. So, como te llamas? Me llamo Craig. ¿Y tú cómo te llamas? Excelente. Next, Juanito says, soy de Puerto Rico. Let's take a look at that word, soy. On the second column, you see the word ser. Ser means to be and is the most common verb in the Spanish language. To use it, though, you have to change it a little bit. So look at the three words underneath. Soy, eres, and es. Soy means I am. In the red, you see no soy. No soy is I am not. Eres is you are or are you if it's a question. No eres is you are not. Es is he is, she is, or it is. It's also used as a general is, like, it is a nice day. It is nice to see you. No es, as you guess, is just, he is not, she is not, or it is not. You can put a subject pronoun in front of these and say, yo soy, tú eres, él es, or ella es. But for now, we're just going to focus on the words soy, eres, and es. We'll worry about subject pronouns later. Below those, you have soy de. De means from, so soy de is how you tell someone where you're from. Soy de Mexico. I'm from Mexico. Soy de Guatemala. I'm from Guatemala. Soy de Colombia. I'm from Colombia. Soy de Alabama. I'm from Alabama. Soy de San Francisco. I'm from San Francisco. So in your story, Juanito says, Soy de Puerto Rico. So where is he from? You guessed it, Puerto Rico. Look at the two questions below, Soy de blank. De donde eres? De donde eres? This is, where are you from? Repeat, de donde eres? De donde es? would be talking about a third person. For example, where is your mother from? De donde es tu mamá? De donde es tu papá? Talking about friends. De donde es tu amigo? De donde es tu amiga? You would use the word es to answer. Mi mamá es de San Francisco. Mi papá es de Honduras. Mi amigo es de la Argentina. Mi amiga es de El Salvador. 
So pause the video and write down in your journal or notebook where your parents are from, where you are from, and where some friends are from. You can even use names such as Mi amigo Juan es de Colombia. Mi amiga Marta es del de Salvador. Now let's look at how we can use the verb ser to describe ourselves and other people. Juanito says, Soy alto. Soy guapo. Y soy muy inteligente. No soy muy artístico, pero soy muy atlético. Alto means tall. So when he says soy alto, what is he saying? Exactly, I'm tall. Guapo means good looking or handsome. So soy guapo is I'm good looking or I'm handsome. Do you see the Y before soy muy inteligente? That Y is pronounced E. And it means and. So he says, soy alto, soy guapo, y soy muy inteligente. And I am very intelligent. No soy muy artístico, pero soy muy atlético. Pero means but. So I am not very artistic, but I am very athletic. So he's using the following words to describe himself. Alto. Guapo, inteligente, and atlético. He's using the word artístico with a negative, so he is not artístico. These words are called adjectives or description words. They describe people or places or things. Spanish adjectives work very differently from English adjectives. So we're going to do a little experiment here. We're going to change Juanito to Juanita, a girl. And I'm going to read the story to you with Juanita. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Me llamo Juanita. Soy de Puerto Rico. Soy alta. Soy guapa. Y soy muy inteligente. No soy muy artística, pero soy muy atlética. So what happens is, if you're speaking about a female or if a female is describing herself, generally there will be A's instead of O's on the end of adjectives. There are some exceptions. Inteligente would not change because it has an E on the end of it. Inteligente would be for both a boy and a girl. So if I'm describing Juanito, I would say, Juanito es alto, guapo, E inteligente. And if I'm describing Juanita, I would say Juanita es alta, guapa, e inteligente. Now, here you may have noticed there's the letter E instead of the letter Y to represent and. The reason for this is actually very simple. Because the word inteligente begins with the letter I, we're going to be using the letter E to represent and pronounced E, instead of Y, which is pronounced E, and it's only to preserve the sound. To give you another example, I could say, I speak Ingles y Español, but if I reversed it, I would have to say, I speak Español e Ingles. If I didn't do that, it would sound like this. I speak Español e Ingles and you lose the and. So and is represented with Y 99% of the time, but with the letter E only when the next word starts with the letter I. Let's take a look at some more adjectives. The third column is labeled adjetivos. Let's go through them. These will go by fast, so you may need to pause the video if you want to write the English words. Ready? Bajo is short. Baja is a short female. Feo is ugly. Fea is ugly for female. Tonto is dumb. Tonta for female. Atractivo, attractive. Atractiva, attractive for female. Bonito, beautiful. Bonita for female. Lindo, pretty. Linda. 
gordo, fat, gorda, flaco, thin or skinny, flaca, muscular, muscular. Musculoso is also muscular and it has a feminine form, musculosa, where muscular does not, it's for both masculine and feminine. And then popular, as you may have guessed, is popular. It doesn't have a feminine form either, so popular would be for a boy and a girl, just like muscular and inteligente that you learned in the story. Rewind and go back through these as much as you need to for retention. Notice the three questions underneath. Como eres? Como es? And como es blank? You've already learned eres and es. Eres is you are or are you, and es is he is, she is, or it is. So when you put como in front of it, it means what are they like? So como eres, what are you like? Como es would be what is he or she like? Below you see the same question with a blank on the end. Just fill in the blank with whoever you're talking about. For example, ¿Cómo es tu mamá? What is your mom like? ¿Cómo es tu papá? What is your dad like? ¿Cómo es tu amigo? What is your friend like? ¿Cómo es tu amiga? What is your friend who is female like? So to answer these, ¿Cómo es tu mamá? Mi mamá es baja y bonita. ¿Cómo es tu papá? Mi papá es muscular y popular. ¿Cómo es tu amigo? Mi amigo es flaco y feo. ¿Cómo es tu amiga? Mi amiga es atractiva y gorda. Notice for females I used A endings. Pause the video and write down a few sentences describing the people in your life. Before we go back to the video, let's look at the section labeled Nacionalidades. This is how you tell someone's nationality. For example, Puerto Riqueño is a male Puerto Rican. Puerto Riqueña would be a female Puerto Rican. Americano, American. Americana, female American. Mexicano, Mexican, Mexicana, Argentino, Argentinian, Argentina, Hondureño, Honduran, Hondureña, Africano, African, Africana, Europeo, European, Europea, and then there's Estado Unidense. This one is specifically for people in the United States, even though we don't use it in the United States. It literally means a United Statesian. The reason this exists is the word Americano is not used just for people in the United States, but anyone who lives on the American continent. So, anyone in Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, Mexico, Canada, anywhere on North, Central, or South America would be referred to as an Americano, just like anyone living in Europe is called Europeo or European. Below these, you have interrogativos. These are just question words. ¿Qué is what? ¿Cómo is how? ¿Quién is who? And ¿Dónde is where? So now let's put it all together. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Me llamo Juanito. Soy de Puerto Rico. Soy alto, soy guapo y soy muy inteligente. No soy muy artístico, pero soy muy atlético. You should now know everything that Juanito is saying about himself. Let's take what we've learned and look at some questions and answers. Let's start with the question, ¿Cómo se dice? Como se dice means how do you say. For example, Como se dice hello in Espanol? Your answer would be, Se dice hola. Como se dice how are you doing in Espanol? Se dice como estás. Como se dice me llamo Juanito in English? 
Se dice, my name is Juanito. So as you can see, you answer the question, como se dice blank, with se dice blank. And now it's your turn. Pause the video and try to answer each question yourself before the question is revealed to you. Ready? Let's go. Como se dice hello in Espanol? Se dice hola. Como se dice como estás in inglés? Se dice how are you? Como se llama el chico? El chico means the boy. La chica would mean the girl. El chico se llama Juanito. ¿De dónde es Juanito? Juanito es de Puerto Rico. Juanito es de Puerto Rico. Or, ¿es Juanito de Puerto Rico? Sí, Juanito es de Puerto Rico. Juanito es de México. Or, ¿es Juanito de México? No, Juanito no es de México. Es de Puerto Rico. ¿Juanito es de México o de Puerto Rico? Juanito es de Puerto Rico. ¿Cómo es? Juanito es alto, es guapo, es inteligente. You could also answer in a negative and say, no es muy artístico. Or you could even put it all together into one sentence. Es alto, guapo, inteligente y atlético. Pero no es artístico. Juanito es artístico. Es Juanito artístico. No, no es artístico. No, Juanito no es artístico. Juanito es atlético. Sí, Juanito es atlético. Sí, Juanito es muy atlético. Juanito es guapo. Sí, Juanito es guapo. Juanito es inteligente. Sí, Juanito es inteligente. Sí, Juanito es muy inteligente. Let's do some either or questions. Juanito es alto o bajo? Juanito es alto. ¿Es Juanito feo o guapo? Es guapo. ¿Juanito es inteligente o tonto? Es inteligente. Let's switch it up a little bit and talk about a girl, Juanita. ¿Juanita es guapa o fea? Juanita es guapa. ¿Es Juanita artística o atlética? Es artística. ¿Juanita es tonta o inteligente? Es inteligente. Okay, what if you want to answer something with a yes or a no? We did a couple of them earlier, but let's focus in on it real quick. Sí o no. 
Juanito es inteligente? Sí, Juanito es inteligente. Juanito es artístico? No, Juanito no es artístico. So if you have a positive sentence, you're going to use the word sí si for yes. For a negative sentence, you use the word no. You can make any sentence negative just by putting no right in front of the verb. Let's make everything in our story negative just for the practice. Ready? No me llamo Juanito. No soy de Puerto Rico. No soy alto. No soy guapo. No soy muy inteligente. Soy muy artístico, pero no soy muy atlético. See how easy that is? Again, make sure you go back and review all of these questions and answers until you feel comfortable with them and ready to move forward. Now it's quiz time! Yay! I'm going to give you 20 questions and see how well you can answer them. You're going to need your journal or your notebook and something to write with. They will go by quickly, so pause and go back as needed so that you can write them down. Do your best and no cheating!
Bien hecho! You just finished your first Spanish class. I'll see you back here soon for your next lesson.